between myself and your truth these cursed memories forever seeping through oh my thirst for myself left me wanting more till I found myself face down on your shore you say come to the river people of God, welcome to worship for this week as we celebrate the baptism of our Lord and we hear that story of Jesus showing up at the River Jordan and being baptized by John. This week we'll also start talking about joy, about reclaiming the joy that is in our lives that can be hard to notice sometimes in the midst of difficult things. And so with excellent music, with uh, great other worship help, let us begin our worship. May the God who is joy be with you. And also with you. God shows us the path of life. In God's, God's presence, presence in fullness, fullness of, of joy. joy.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And let us pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day praising you with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Gospel reading for today is from Mark 1, 4 through 11. John the Baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. The word of the Lord. One of the great privileges in my role that I, I take very seriously is that um, I get to be with people, with their family and their friends um, while they are dying. And, and I try to take that responsibility really seriously because it's, it's an important time that makes a difference for people. The first time that ever happened for me, um, it was with a guy named Bert. Um, this was, I was working as an ICU hospital chaplain uh, one summer while I was in seminary. And um, uh, uh, Bert, I gotten to know him after a couple of weeks. He had just kind of seen his decline along the way, I'd gotten to know his family as they came in and visited. Um, and then there came that point where doctors said there's really nothing more that we can do. And so people got kind of gathered, family and friends gathered around his bedside and, and waited. And I was there with them for it, um, sort of prepared to give a prayer as best I could. And, and we got to this, uh, to this point where there was a lot of silence. It was probably three or four minutes of silence um, and nobody really had anything to say. And I, I remembered at that point that one of the other chaplains on, uh, uh, at the hospital had talked about how um, the best thing you can do is ask questions and tell, ask people to tell stories. So I did. I, I asked, uh, does anybody have a story they'd like to tell about Bert or a memory they'd like to share? And there was a few seconds of silence where I thought, well, okay, I guess that, that didn't go over very well. And then one of the grandsons told a story. I, I still remember the story where, um, where he and Bert went up to try and fix their roof once and slowly but surely every single tool that they had uh, just slid right off the roof and Bert apparently started laughing so hard uh, that he almost slid off the roof and so uh, but and so everybody kind of chuckled and and then somebody else shared another memory and then another and, and we got to this point it was really interesting where people were um, crying and laughing at the same time that that those two things happened in conjunction with each other and eventually in the middle of all the laughter and all the tears Bert died and, um, and his family was there and he was sort of surrounded by all these memories that had been a part of them. And I, and I think that was the first moment that I ever recognized how, even in difficult circumstances, um, joy can be found even when things are hard, even when there is uh, something that is really should cause you grieving, joy can show up even then in the midst of all of that. Now. Our gospel reading today um, is one that we get every year. Uh, it's about this baptism of Jesus. And I think, honestly, when we're talking about reclaiming joy, so we're kind of starting this theme of, of reclaiming joy in our lives, we get this story. Uh, and it's got some familiar things that every one of them does, right? John shows up and baptizes. Jesus uh, uh, shows up. All these people seem to be there. Jesus shows up to be baptized. Miraculous things happen. Doves come down. Voices from heaven boom, right? And it sort of always marks the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Next week, we'll hear about it as it continues and progresses. Now, in the Gospel of Mark, though, there's this little detail that I love that, 
that can kind of get skipped over really quickly. And it's, it's about the heavens. I don't know if you notice this. The heavens get torn apart. The word there is actually uh, schizomenos, right? So you hear schizo, like schizophrenia. It's the, it's the rending of something, the breaking, the tearing of something. This is, this is like fabric being torn. And actually, this word will show up again at the end of the gospel when Jesus on the cross dies and the temple on the curtain is torn in two. Now, what's interesting about this, they, they make that very clear. This is about fabric being torn open, that something has been rent. And if you've ever seen fabric, if you've ever torn a piece of fabric before, you know that at the end of it, you can't really put it together so that everything just kind of knits up exactly the way it's supposed to, right? Usually it's frayed or it's stretched in some ways. What this is saying is that the heavens are now torn open to earth. That, that the presence of God, the, 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 all of the holiness in heaven has now, that, that fell upon Jesus, is not just going to go back up and close the door but instead is now torn open and it's all about, it's not restricted to this far off heaven, but now the presence of God, the presence of God's heaven is with us. Now, this brings me back to joy because a few years ago, I felt like I didn't know enough about joy. And so I do, what I usually do with this is I try to learn more and more about the word. And one of the things I did was look up every single passage in the Bible that talks about joy or rejoicing. And so almost every single one of them, when, as you walk through it, always in scripture, there seems to be this connection to the presence of God being near. That joy comes when God is present. So, here you go. Here's some examples. So Psalm 16, 11. You show me the path of life in your presence. There is fullness of joy. Or Isaiah 49, 13. Sing for joy, O heavens, and exult, O earth. Break forth, O mountains, into singing. For the Lord has comforted his people and will have compassion on his suffering ones. Or Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Connection, Holy Spirit and joy. Over and over again, as we look through scripture, we see this deep connection between the presence of God and joy, the relationship between recognizing the God who is with us, who, whose heavens have been torn open and who is now right there alongside us, and the rejoicing that happens in our lives. Whether what we are facing is something that is happy and exuberant and delightful, or it is mournful and grieving and sad. In our reading today, what we find is that the heavens have been torn open and they aren't going to be sewn up again. That God's joyful presence is with us through it all. Happy or sad, pandemic or frankly, almost anything better. God is here and with God comes the joy that is in our lives. So here's what we're going to do during this time of reclaiming joy. We're going to take one minute, one whole minute to reflect on how on this joy that we find in God's presence. So here's the question I want you to take one minute to think about. When have you felt God's presence? It could be a, a place. It could be an event you were at with someone. When have you felt God's presence? Take one minute to think about that and we'll come back with a blessing. And so, may the heavens torn open at Jesus' baptism show you God's presence in your life every single day. And may God's joy nurture you and hold you in every place you find yourself. Amen.
Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the church throughout the world and its leaders, that guided by the Holy Spirit, they proclaim the forgiveness of sins. Let us pray. Lord, Lord in your mercy. mercy. Hear our prayer. For wilderness and water, wind and wild beasts, and all living things on earth, that God's goodness is revealed through creation, and faithful stewards care for all God has made. Let us pray. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. For the nations of the world and their leaders, for laborers busy both day and night, and for peacemakers amid strife, that God inspire all people to use their strength wisely, let us pray. We also pray for our country, the United States, President Trump, and other national, state, and local leaders, that your love and peace will guide them. Lord, Lord, in in your your mercy, mercy. hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. O God, shower compassion on sick and those who provide medical care, on the imprisoned and those who show them mercy, on the lonely and those who provide companionship, and on all who suffer, especially Lisa Skinner, Nancy Patchen, Carla Wagner, Jennifer Marcus, Mike Brula, Eugene Hundorf, Mark Schrader, Don Brown, Lana Martin, Rose Carlson, Betty Weilbacher, Tim Fetter, Kathy Borelli, and Nicole Seiler, and those with chronic ailments including cancer, diabetes, MS, dementia, and Parkinson's. Lord, Lord in, in your, your mercy. mercy. Hear our our prayer. prayer. For the congregation gathered here and joining us online, for our students, for those seeking renewal in their daily work, that all the beloved of God experience grace and peace, let us pray. Lord, Lord, in in your your mercy. mercy. Hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed who now rest from their labors, especially Ronnie Gerth and Julie Reese. We pray that their witness inspire us in our baptismal vocations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, we pray for your church in its many forms, and we especially pray for the Reverend Kim Crawford and the Reverend Henry Martinez, that God will further their work with the young adults in global mission in Australia. We pray for Emmanuel's Lutheran and Seguin and their pastors, Marcus Bigot and Kelsey Theist. We pray for Triumphant Lutheran Church that your presence will shine and your spirit move among us as we grow in Christ to serve others. Lord, Lord, in in your mercy, mercy. hear our prayer. We pray for all those whose work is essential for our life and well-being. And we especially pray today for healthcare workers, teachers, and school staff farmers, ranchers, and other food producers, delivery and retail employees, and many more. We pray for first responders, fire, police, and EMS personnel, and members of the United States Armed Forces deployed and stationed around the world. And we name especially Jesse, Ashley, Mike, and Christy. Lord, Lord in your, in your mercy, mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have birthdays and anniversaries this week, and we especially pray for Jerome, Fela, Phoebe, Lana, Chad, Alex, Bob, Lori, Rosemarie, Mariam, Barbara, Blaine, Allison, Lucas, JT, and Shirley, and for Jerry and DK Gubar. Lord, Lord, in in your your mercy, mercy. hear our prayer. For what else do the people of God pray? God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you. In the name of Jesus, Amen. amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share that peace with one another.
O oh God, receive our gifts as you receive us, like a parent receives their child, with arms open wide. Nourish us anew in your tender care, and empower us to seek out joy and tend to others with love, through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. Amen. And we remember in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. So as we celebrate this meal of grace and we do so rejoicing, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So I invite you to get out your communion kits as we celebrate this meal together. If there are those in your household who are not taking communion yet. Remind them of this blessing that they have heard in their baptism, that they are a beloved child of God. That voice that calls out is for them, uh, that this promise is for them. And so the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Loving God, thank you for the feast we have shared today and the gifts of shared abundance and joy. Thank you for the gift of sharing life and community. Make us your beloved community in the world at work for the joyful renewal of your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, fittingly, I think, Deacon Chris, can you do these announcements underwater? Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, buddy. All right. So here are this week's announcements. First is this week is a communion element pickup week. And so if you need communion elements, please come on Thursday from 5 to 6 or on Saturday from 10 to 1130. You can also drop off your tithes and offerings at that time. It, when you come through the line, if you have not already picked up your 2021 giving envelopes, you can request those as well. Uh, by the end of January, we will have our 2020 giving statements for taxes available. And so uh, they may be available at this week's communion uh, pickup. If not, they will be available uh, by January 31st. And so next time you come up to the church, either for communion elements or for worship, we encourage you to request uh, those giving statements. They will be in your box. Uh, if you are not coming up to the church, you can send an email to us in the office and we will drop those in the mail for you. Uh, summer camp sign up will be uh, pretty soon coming in the month of February. We will be taking our kids uh, in second grade through high school to uh, Camp Chrysalis again. So our second grade through eighth grade will be there from June 27th through July 2nd. Um, and then our high school kids will actually be there for two weeks, one week at Ebert, one week at Chrysalis. That will begin on June 20th 
through July 2nd. So be on the lookout for registration information for that. We have a uh, limited number of spots. We reserved a few spots and once those spots fill up, uh, it, they are gone. And so we are encouraging you not to wait until the end of February to sign up. But if you know that uh, you your kids would like to go, you can uh, you sign them up soon. For those that signed up last year, uh, you can check with me on if you still have um, uh, money left over from a holding uh, uh, th that we held from last year uh, to see how much you would owe from from uh, for this year. And then finally, we have our senior high gathering is coming up February 20th and 21st. Uh, it's a chance for our high school kids to spend a day out at camp, enjoying camp activities outdoors. And then we will have an optional overnight here at our church that evening on the 20th. Uh, those are, there are two options. You can either go for the, just a the day at Chrysalis or you can, uh, you can continue on with the overnight. Uh, I will be sending out information about how to register for that this week so that you can make sure and get, uh, and, and sign up for that. Please let me know if you have any questions. Um, but, uh, the sign up will go until I believe February 3rd or 4th. Those are the announcements that we have for this week. We will continue on with our benediction blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So no matter where we find ourselves today, our mission remains the same. We grow in Christ to serve others. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God.